In this video, we're going to take a look at finding the gradient of a line. Now, in this video, we're taking a look at finding the gradient of a line, but with a graph. So there's two ways of doing this. You can do it with a graph and without a graph. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how to find the gradient without a graph. So let's just jump straight into these questions here. Now, what I've got here is the line L, and we can see that's drawn on this grid below. So we've got our chart here, our graph. And what I want to do is I want to find the value of the gradient of the line L. Now, when we talk about the gradient of the line, what we mean here essentially is just how steep this line really is. And the way we actually measure that is to look at the difference in the y coordinates in relation to the change in the x coordinates. Now, the way I like to do this is to draw a right angle triangle. And this is something that a lot of students find tricky at first, but with time and practice, it becomes very easy. You can just instantly spot these triangles um, after doing a bit of you know, practice with these type of questions. But at first you might find it a bit tricky, that is normal, so don't worry. Now, there's usually a number of different triangles that you can pick. So what I'll do is I'll pick one triangle to start with and then I'll just pick a few others just so we can kind of see um, the difference here. Now a few tips to help with this is to pick points that we know the exact coordinates of. So for example, I'm not going to pick here as one of my starting points because we don't know exactly the x coordinate and the y coordinate. It does, at a quick glance, look like it's halfway across here between these two points here. So that's one, two, three. So this would be, say, three and a half. It looks like three and a half, but we don't know for definite. It might be 3.6, it might be 3.4, it might be 3.55. So we don't know for definite. So we're not going to pick that as our point. Okay, so let's just get rid of that there. So, like I said, we're going to pick points that have um, integer coordinates, so whole numbers. So for example here, what I could do is I could pick here. We know that's one, two units long, so that's two, zero. Now you don't have to write the coordinates either, but I will do just for the first couple of examples, just so we can see this. And we go to a point again, which is on a, which is integer coordinates essentially, so whole numbers again. So for example, let's say here, okay. We know that's five and one, two, three, so that's five, three, okay. And what I do, like I said, is I just draw a right angle triangle. So from this point here, we draw a right angle triangle, and go up to this point here, and we've got our right angle triangle. Okay, so that's my right angle triangle. You don't have to draw the, the right angle in, obviously, but just to highlight that. And like I said, we're looking at the change in the y coordinates compared to the change in the x coordinates. So how many units are we going up here? Okay, we're going up. This is a positive gradient. So we go up one, two, three units so the change in the y coordinates here is a three unit so going up three and how many are we going across here well we go across one two three so we also go across three units okay so to find the value of the gradient we use the letter m here to represent the gradient so m is equal to the change in y so change in y divided by the change in x so this is how we compare that relation um, or that relationship between the change in the y coordinates compared to the change in the x coordinates. Okay, and you might sometimes see some slightly different notation here. And um, we use the Greek letter delta here, so that's delta y divided by delta x. Okay, so the change in the y coordinates divided by the change in the x coordinates. So that's one way you might see that represented. It's quite rare, but just so you've seen that notation as well. Okay, so the change in the y coordinates here, well, that's an increase of three. So it's going to be 3 divided by the change in the x coordinates, which again is 3. So we get 3 over 3, which would give us 1. So we know the gradient, or the value of the gradient of L, for this first question here is 1. Now what that's telling us is, for every 1 unit that we go along, we also go up 1 unit. If the gradient was 2, for every 1 unit we go along, we'd go up 2. Okay. Now let me draw another triangle here just to highlight this. So just do one more triangle here again. There's loads of different examples you can pick. Let's say I start here and we go to here. Okay, so a slightly bigger triangle here. So it would look like this. So again, let's check how many we go across this. So we go across one, two, three, four, five, six. We go across six units. And how many do we go up here? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, what you might notice here straight away is that we get the same value for the gradient, and that should be the case, okay? So it doesn't matter um, where you draw the triangle, as long as you obviously draw it correctly, but you should get the same gradient. So here again, m would be six 
divided by 6, and again you'd get 1 there. Okay, so that's the value of the gradient interval for the first question. Let's take a look at this one now. And this one's slightly different because what I've got here now is what we call a negative gradient. So the line's actually going downwards. So for the last one, the line was starting essentially in the bottom left and going up into the top right. What happens now is we start in this top left quadrant here and we go down into the bottom right. Okay. So again, what I want to do is I just want to draw a rectangle triangle. So again, this gets easier the more you do this. Um, but there's a few different triangles we can pick here. If I start with this point here. And we go to say here and just join these up. Then we get our rhino triangle here. And how many units do we go across? Well, we'll go across one, two, three, four. So we go across four units. And how many units do we go up? Well, we go up one, two, but be slightly careful. So I'm saying we're going up units. But in essence, we're actually going down here. Okay, we're starting in this top left quadrant and we're going down. So we've actually gone down two units. We call that minus two here. Okay. So the gradient m, that's equal to the change in y, so del y, divided by the change in x, del x. Now the change in y here, that was negative 2. We've gone down 2 units, so we get minus 2 divided by the change in x, which is 4. That's positive 4. Okay, so it's minus 2 over 4. And we can simplify this here, divide top and bottom by 2, and we get minus a half there. Okay, so what that's saying is for every one unit we go along, so for every one unit we go along, we go down a half. Go along another unit, and you go down another half there. Okay, so there we go. So that's our solution for the second one. So the gradient of L is equal to minus a half there. So another one here where this time we have a positive gradient. If you're feeling confident enough, have a quick go now, pause the video, have a quick go, and then we'll take a look in a moment what you should get. So hopefully you've gotten okay with this practice question. Let's take a look now at what you should have got. So again, all we're looking to do here is just draw a rhino triangle. And again, there's loads of different triangles you can draw. Um, again, I'll do two different triangles for this one. So if I start at this point here, we know the exact coordinates. And let's go across, say, two units. So we're going to go across two units. And we'll finish there. So we'll go across two units. And we join this triangle up here, like so. So we check how many units we go across. We go across one, two units. So that's two there for the change in the x coordinates. And how many do we go up now? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six there. Okay. So the gradient, the value of the gradient of L, we use m to represent the gradient. Well, that's the change in the y coordinates, delta y, divided by the change in the x coordinates, delta x. Well, delta y here, that's the change in the y coordinates. That's positive 6. This is a positive gradient, so we get 6 there on top. Now we divide this by delta x, so the change in the x coordinates, which in this case is positive 2. So we get 6 over 2. So how many 2s go into 6? Well, that would just simply be 3 there. Okay, so the value of the gradient of L is equal to 3. So again, what we're saying here is for every one unit we go along, we go up 3. So let's just do one more triangle here just to highlight this. So again, you could pick a really small triangle here. If I pick this one, go across one, we've got one, two, three there. Okay, so that would have, again, a gradient of three. If we pick a larger triangle, um, let's say we pick here. And we join to here, okay? So again, it's completely up to you which triangle you draw, as long as obviously you draw it correctly. So we go across to uh, here, and then we join this up. So this is quite a large triangle. So how many do we go across? We go across one, two, three, four. And then how many do we go up? We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. And again, here we check the gradient. So m is equal to the change in y, which is twelve, divided by the change in x, which is four. Twelve divided by four. How many fours go into twelve? Well, that would give me three again there. Okay. So like you can see, it doesn't matter the size of the triangle that you draw, as long as you draw it correctly, you will always get the same gradient there. Okay, so that's our solution to question three. And let's take a look at one more question here to finish with. Again, if you're feeling confident enough, have a quick go at this question. But if not, let's take a look together now. 
So what I've got here again, it's just the line L drawn on this grid below. Now, the first thing you hopefully notice here is that we're going to have a negative gradient. OK, so it's not going to be positive. It will be negative. And that's because we're standing in this top left quadrant here and we're going down into this bottom right quadrant. So again, all we do here is we draw our triangle. So where do we start with here? Um, let's say I start here and we go up to, where can we go up to here? Let's say we go to there. Okay, so we go across one, two. So we've gone across one, two there and join the triangle up here. So we've gone up one, two, three, four units there. Okay, now be slightly careful. Remember, we're going downwards here. So this isn't an increase of four, it's actually a decrease of four. So we've gone down four units. Okay, maybe it would help if I did my triangle the other way, but it doesn't matter. So when I say the other way, um, if I start up here, we would be going down. Okay, so remember, this will be negative. Okay, so the gradient M is equal to the change in Y, so del Y, divided by the change in X, del X. Okay, so the change in Y here, like we've seen, that's negative, so that gives us minus four. Now we divide this by the change in X, well, that was two, so we get minus four over two. And we can simplify this by dividing top and bottom by two here, which would give me minus two there. Okay, so what we're saying here is for every one unit we go along, so for every one unit we go along here, we go down two, so one, two there. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution. That gives us the gradient of L here um, for the final question. Just a quick point to finish with here. When you get the value of the gradient, for GCSE math, the gradient will generally be pretty sensible. So it will either be a whole number, could be positive, could be negative. Or if you do get a fraction, it will be something quite nice. So like we've already seen, we've got a half or a negative a half here. It will always be something like a half, um, minus a half, three quarters, a quarter, uh, maybe a fifth. Um, you won't get something like, say, um, 12 over 35 as your gradient. That would be extremely unlikely if you got something like that. I'd be worried, I'd be double checking it. Okay, so you should get something sensible. Um, if, you get, if you start getting crazy answers like this, um, then just double check it. Something's probably just gone slightly wrong there. Okay, but there we have it. So that brings us to the end of this video on finding the gradient of a line. In the next video, like we said, we're gonna take a look at finding the gradient of a line again, but this time without a graph.